And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Tom Vassell. I get a big kick about seeing gears moving other gears. Uh, and that's something that fifth gear does. Although, actually, you could probably take the whole gear thing out of it and just put on circles on a mat. This is really an abstract strategy game for two to four players. Let's take a look. Off. You're going to put this cog piece here in the middle, and then in all the other spots, you're going to put these numbers that are numbered from 1 to 24. Now, you can put them any way you want. Um, random is the way that the game tells you to do it. I suppose there would be a pretty cool, optimal way to do it. And I think if I wanted to play the game more, I would figure that out, you know, to figure out that maybe 24 was best in a corner or something, and that the smaller numbers are closer to the middle, but I'm not sure. So anyway, we put them out randomly. And then you're going to put a white cog here in the middle. The cogs fit very easily around those numbers. In fact, if you add another cog, it's fun to spin them. Okay, It has nothing to do with the game, spinning them. Um, but it's still pretty cool. On your turn, you're going to roll two 12-sided dice. Hopefully. So here I roll a 2 and a 5. That means if I'm green, and green happens to have six of these cogs, if I'm green, that means I can put one on a 2, or one on a 5, and one on the 5, uh, where is my five? Or, instead of putting one on the two, one on the five, I could put one on the seven. Nah, I'd rather put one on the two and one on the five. So then the next player goes yellow, and yellow gets a ten and an eight. So instead of putting one on the ten and one on the eight, he decides to put one on the eighteen. And then red goes, red gets a four and a four, so he doesn't really have much options other than to either put one on the four or one on the eight, so he chooses the eight. And then blue goes, and then blue gets a one and a seven, so blue can put one on the one, and on the seven, or one on the eight. So he decides to do that. Then we're back to green, and green rolls a three and a six. And he wants to do the three and a six, so he puts a green there, and he puts a green here. Now, what are you trying to do as the game progresses? Uh, by the way, if let's say red goes and red gets a 1 and a 18, he can remove, oh, not a 1, 18, a 1 and a, let's say he gets a 1 and a, a 4. He can put 1 here, replacing the color that was there, and 1 up here on the 4. And like I said, everything spins when you put it on, which makes it really neat. You're trying to get 5 of yours that are next to each other and are also touching the white one in the middle. That's it. You do that, you win. It doesn't matter how cool or how many you have on the board. Once all your pieces are on the board, then you have to move them, although you can choose at that point to not move them. But at this point, it doesn't matter how many other pieces are on the board. Red has five together and next to the white, so red wins. That's how you play. As you can see, spinning the gears is fun, and we like to fill up the whole board and spin the gears, uh, but it really doesn't have anything to do with the game. The game is about doing the numbers. This is a very simple game. You know, you don't have a lot of choices. You roll dice and you put them, you have two choices each turn. So this isn't going to be anything that's in, in great depth. And I do wonder if it might have been better with a different grid and maybe a better spread. Because, for example, the, the 24 is almost never going to be rolled. You have a 1 out of 144 chance to roll that. And then likely that's never going to show up in the course of a game. And if that number goes towards the middle, then you're kind of, that spot's going to sit open. It's a much better two-player game than it is a four-player game, although uh, I'm kind of ambivalent on it. It's, it's, it's okay. I didn't dislike it, but it didn't really you know, bring out any kind of woohoo type thing, except spinning the stuff. I love doing that. What did you think? Um, I thought it was a lot of fun putting out the gears, trying to get the five together and the white thing. Um, the thing was, um, I just thought that every time whenever you put something out, someone else would get it, and then the game would just take forever. Yeah, the game can take a long time, especially considering people roll, aha, 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 back and forth, for yours, it's mine, it's yours, it's mine. <laughs> and that can go on for a long time. Especially Maybe the making the victory, game. yeah, especially in a four-player game. Maybe making the victory condition easier, four or three rings, although that might be too easy. I don't know. So like I'm saying, I would play this with just two players, really. Maybe three, but I would not play it with four, because four just kind of really bogged down. Any final thoughts on the game? No. 
No? All right. So what, what's your final thoughts on the game? Do you like it or dislike it? Love it. You love it? Oh. Well, there you go. That I wasn't expecting. I do not love it. I think it's okay. I wish the gears moving had more to do with the actual game itself. And it's almost a little too lucky. But hey, she likes it. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews, as well as our top-rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find the latest board game news at Dicetowernews.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Fun Again Games, the world's best game source. Fun Again Games has over 5,000 games available. Check them out at funagain.com.